find people at home. Julian John, one game number one. Model Green trying up a game here over Jund. John on your right, Fabiano on your left. These players are going to shuffle up and get ready here for game number two. Let me go to bring you the rest of this match and hopefully some more after it. But if not, we'll announce our winner, of course, of our Mythic Madness giveaway and get ready for round number 10 soon enough. Fabiano's top eight of back-to-back -back invitationals here on the SCU Tour, by the way. So we'll be looking for three in a row. And Julian John's still looking for his first invitational top eight. So notably, uh, we don't have sideboards up on this screen, but uh, after sideboard, Gerard does have access to three copies of Fulminator Mage, which are pretty good against uh, the mono green Tron deck at slowing them down. Mm -hmm. uh, taking them off of uh, Tron mana is, is where you want to be, as long as you're putting pressure on them. If, if you're not hitting them with something like a Tarmogoy for a Dark Confidant, uh, destroying their lands doesn't really matter that much. Because uh, their entire deck is built to find more copies of those Tron lands. Yeah. That's like their whole deck. Don't forget about those Blood Moons that he's playing, too. He's got two of those in his sideboard as well. Yeah. Two copies of Blood Moon, not overly common out of Jund, but uh, I have seen uh, Brad Nelson do it before, so I'm going to say, eh, it's a thing. You know. And it can't take some players by surprise. You don't, you don't see Blood Moon in the sideboard of Jund that often anymore. That I'll is say. true. That is true. So this is something that maybe could take Julian Jund by surprise. Don't know if Julian John is expecting this card. You expect Fulminator Mage nowadays. That doesn't really come as much of a surprise from any of these Golgari-based decks. But Blood Moon, not so much nowadays. So Julian giving this deck a, a healthy shuffle. There it is. No, just kidding. A little more. A little more. Dealer, give me a wash. Who's going to break first, Gerard or Julian? All right. Deck is what I like to believe is sufficiently randomized. Oh, uh, you know. And now, Gerard will be on the play. He'll take a look at his opening hand. Personally, I don't think people randomize their deck enough. I like shuffling. Yeah, shuffling's dope. I like to get a good... Good shuffle. People always complain that like Magic Online shuffle algorithm was oh busted. Boy. You know, yeah. it's like, oh no, I drew seventeen lands in a row. It's like, well, a no, you didn't. <laughs> you know, b you could have won on turn four if you had not messed up. <laughs> and and c, uh, this is true randomization. It is true randomization. Let's take a look here at Julian's hand, which is not particularly good, folks. Two hers is mines, expedition map, oblivion stone, thrag tusk. Warm Coil Engine, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Inquisition of Kozlek is being cast here, so Gerard can only take two of those cards in Oblivion Stone Expedition Map, and Map is the obvious selection. Yeah, but it's Tron. It's just Tron, Tron on top. And it's the, <laughs> and it's the right ones. Mine is where Julian will start. Fabiano's going to play another discard spell here in Thoughtseize. The draw step was a Ghost Quarter. So now this is where you peel. Tron, Tron. The power uh, Tron, Tron. Yeah, definitely. Definitely <laughs> Tron, Tron. <laughs> LeTron James. Yeah. If LeBron played Magic, he would play Tron. For sure. Oblivion Stone down. Show me a Nurse's land. Wait, so is, uh, is Thragtus like J.R. Smith just kind of a big dumb idiot that no no because like Thrakos uh, is like you need to, you need to pick like a, a card that's that's good a lot of the time but not great sometimes um, like real high ceiling and the floor is also low that's J.R. Smith okay if you find one of those J.R. Smith's gonna watch this replay and be like yeah, that's what he's doing who's this guy yeah talking smack yeah he's about me he's tuning into the broadcast yeah. Hi, JR. Going to sacrifice a chromatic star is Julian John for a green mana. Oh, well, there it is. Weird. It took him a little uh, while to weird get there. It took him one turn yeah. to find it. There's the power plant found the tower. Gerard notably missing his third land drop. To, that is worth noting. That is no worth Fulminator noting. yet. Yep. No Blood Moon yet. Yep. He's about to get smushed. Better draw third land, Gerard. <laughs> you, better. you better draw third land and do something. Yep. Otherwise, this gets bad. That's my point. This is fine. Right. This totally is fine. modern. This, this, is fine. this is okay. He's just gonna turn four. He get he got hit with two discard spells. He's gonna play Nugent on turn four. I got no problem with it. But got hit with two discard spells. Draw to a land. How about that? Well, does he have it? He's that's got blood moon. He's got blood moon. Okay. Well, yeah. he's gonna lock himself out. That's, well, but that's fine. 
That makes it a little more difficult. You have to play Blood Moon. But Julian does have access to Oblivion Stone. No, got taken. I lied. Yep, gone. Does have Thraktos still. Yep, but no Forest. Well, here's the thing. Ghost Quarter. If Gerard plays Blood Moon, probably going to want to Ghost Quarter on his own lands. Get a Forest. Go get a Forest. And then he'll have access to Green Man and be able to keep doing his thing. Gerard had a quick question for the judge. He's back. Yeah, but that also sets him back a full land. Uh, and when you're trying to get to a natural five to cast Directus, it's pretty tough. Well, you already got another land in your hand, right? So you go score a land. You're, you got a forest in a land. And then you play your third land. Tarmogoyf's not that big. I think you have to maybe take the risk, personally. But it does not look like Julian is interested in doing so. So that solves that. Yeah, all he needs to do is draw a Chromatic Star, Sphere, something like that. Uh, and that should unlock green mana. A natural force is also fine. They usually play three or four of those. Let's see how many Julian's got. Julian's got four. There's the Tower of Power, but nothing to do with it, of course, because those are mountains, folks. So we're going to head back over to Fabiano. He's going to tap some mana. What's he got to follow up with? Ooh, Fulminator Mage. Okay. Yeah. Under Blood Moon, everything can still tap for red. Fulminator Mage hybrid mana coming in, popping that Tron piece. Now, I believe Tarmogoyf grew, right? It's a should be. Should be a 4 or 5 now. Yeah, so so Fabiano's got a real clock here as he's going to come across here with Tarmogoyf. Julian John needs to peel some sort of way to play a Thraktos, folks. There's and there's his mine. Pass the turn back. Now, this is one reason why you don't see Blood Moon out of Jund a lot. Uh, Gerard wasn't able to draw a fetch land early on, and so he's stuck unable to cast basically any spell in his hand other than that uh, Fulminator Mage from previous turn. Uh, his hand does have a bunch of things like Assassin's Trophy, Things like that. And Julian here going to stop that Thraktos in its tracks. Well, Julian took a risk. He drew Chromatic Star, didn't have a land to follow up, so he cracked the star for green mana, hoping to draw a land, drew the land, played the Thraktos. So he got a little bit fortunate there. Yeah, but he was at such a low life total at this point that Gerard attacking plus a single Lightning Bolt was potentially lethal. So I think it's, it's aggressive, but it's warranted. Yeah. So Fabiano is a turn away. And now he's a lot more than a turn away, that's for sure. We go over to Gerard now on Julian's end step, where he's got a Kolagon's command that he's trying to figure out how he wants to use. Yeah, he can uh, make Julian discard a card or deal two damage or something and get back the Fulminator Mage. And what's tough here for Fabiano now, too, is that, okay, Julian's got six mana. You know he's got a Worm Coil Engine in his hand. So you kind of want to blow up his mana a little bit if you can, but if Julian peels another land again, Warm Claw is going to come down and the game gets even more difficult. So Ancient Stirrings will be the discard there from Julian John, which means his hand is pretty darn good. Yeah, I think Gerard's uh, easiest path to victory is to find a way to make that Tarmogoyf into a 5-6 so it can freely attack through the Thraktusk. Uh, but that's going to be relatively difficult with him uh, locked under Blood Moon. Well, it looks like it might be a 5-6 now. We saw oh, because that die the, in, the instant from uh, from Colgan's command made it a five six. Yeah, so we got instant sorcery artifacts. Land is four. Creature oh. is not in the graveyard anymore because of Fulminator Mage. So yeah, we got a four. We have we have land instant artifact sorcery. It's a four or five right now. Yep. With the ability to turn into a five six at a moment's notice. Yep. Gerard kind of posturing here with the Fulminator Mage he, before the end of the turn. He's a hundred percent going to uh, use the Fulminator Mage. You know, just giving Julian a chance to potentially make a bad block. Even though I don't even know if this is that bad of a block. Yeah, I actually personally kind of like this block, right? Because sure, you lose a land, and you lose your Thraktos, and you get a Beast Token, but that's just another draw step. No, 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 sir. I do not get on camera very much. Mm. You get that Titus and Beast Token on the battlefield mm. right now, Mr. Spotter Judge. Well, well that's game. That's game. Oh, feeling confidence. We'll see if we can get a Todd Anderson Beast token out here right away. I'm livid. You, oh, you, you can't see him at home, but he is. There it is. There, there it is. There you go. You attacked for three. Three times. You're taking a bite out of Gerard Fabiano right now. <laughs> Let's see what this is going to be. Dark Confidant, little outclassed. Let's go back over to Julian. Drew another land. Yeah, we are dunzo. <laughs> Here's the story. This is why the land destruction, Blood Moon plan, that type of thing, is not always effective against Tron. If, mm -hmm. if you can't clock them significantly, they can draw out and just start casting their stuff. Especially after sideboard, you know, they do have things like Thraktus, which buy them a lot of time. Cards like Warm, Warm Cool Engine, even though they cost six, 
bridge the gap to, to your big stuff like Karn and even Ugin later on. Oblivion Stone was the find. Worm Coil Engine going to come across here for six life linking, death touching damage. Yeah, Gerard here with access to just red mana, that Blood Moon, uh, hindering all of the cards in his hand, basically. It'll be a forest here from Julian John, perhaps. Let's make it Oblivion Stone first. Pass the turn back. Over to Fabiano, who will reveal a stomping ground and have to draw a card here from Dark Confidant in just a moment. Nah, he revealed a mountain. Well, stomping ground <laughs> mountain. Yeah, you, you got me. Ah, <laughs> got even. It's not looking good for Gerard here. Julian doesn't have to pop this Oblivion Stone basically ever, but it's always nice to have a, like a safety valve if things start to go horribly wrong for him. He has a blocker here with the Beast token. Warm Cool Engine gaining six life a turn, which uh, invalidates the attack from Gerard for the most part. Now, what do you think about this new rules change with, with Blood Moon? Cause I'm, I'm for it because it just makes things less complicated. Yeah, so nor old school rules. Gerard plays a stomping ground. Has to pay two life if he wants it to come in untapped. Nowadays, eh, it's just a mountain, no matter yeah. where, no matter where it's set. Yeah, you know? I, I like that better. I think it's just simpler and cleaner and everything else. Same. It is a little confusing for people who've been playing for a long time. I myself have had that come up uh, multiple times and just, you know, uh, it looked weird at first, and I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, it's just rule just, change. Yeah, just a mountain. Here's a thought seize. Goodbye, Ugin. Oh uh, no. Don't need Ugin to win this game though. That's for sure. We're going to head back over to Julian John. I suspect Gerard is going to double block the warm coin. Whoa, well, no, Nelly. That was a good draw. That's getting harder to do now. Ain't no double blocks happening now. A Relic of Progen is going to come down and be sacrificed right away, which means that the old Tarmogoyf has turned into a 0-1. That's a force there for Julian John. And now even you get to attack, Todd, or at least he's thinking about it. There you go. Yep. The only card Julian I'm mildly afraid of here, Lightning Bolt. But I believe uh, Gerard multiple times now would have bolted the beast token and started attacking. Well, oh, maybe not. He peeled one off of uh, his draw step for the turn, though, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, things might change a little bit, but I think he's still chump blocking on the Wormcoil cool engine right now. Yeah, the question is just which creatures he's going to chump block with. Will it be Tarmogoyf or Dark Confidant? I think that Gerard, in order to win this game, has to get unreasonably lucky with the Dark Confidant. But you got to give yourself a chance to win. Yeah, he needs to peel a forest, and Dark Covenant gives him two shots at it, whereas Goyf only gives him one. A forest uh, would allow him to use Assassin's Trophy to buy a turn uh, by casting the trophy on Gerard, or Julian's upkeep. Yep. Gerard is trying to give him Well, hold on. Ooh, he's good. Ooh. Wow. That's a little surprising. I'm blowing the Oblivion Stone now. The Blood Moon's actually... That's weird. Huh. Now, Julian... So, Julian's not... By doing that, he's not giving himself Tron back. He's killing Dark Confidant. And he's killing Blood Moon. But by killing Blood Moon, you're actually turning on Gerard's lands. So, I can't quite make sense of that one. It's possible Julian assumed that uh, Gerard was not shut down by his lands very much. Uh, it's also possible that the card in his hand is very good, and he just wants to be able to cast it. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't. For I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a vexing play. We'll just have to wait and see how it shakes out. Well, Gerard's gonna shuffle Julian's deck here very quickly, and then we're gonna go back to him. Assassin's Trophy done resolving. Took care of the life linking uh, worm token. It appears. It's, now Gerard actually gets to kind of operate here, so. We'll see if Fabiano can weirdly take advantage of this new opportunity. Well, he has Bloodbraid off, which he's uh, pretty sure he's about to cast, which matches up pretty well against the Death Touch Worm on the other side of the battlefield. Maelstrom Pulse takes care of that. If he had waited a turn on the uh, Assassin Trophy, both the Worm Tokens technically have the same name, even though they have two different abilities. Melstrom Pulse does take care of both of those Worm Tokens at once, but uh, Gerard wants to use his mana efficiently, so smart play by him. Un a little lucky, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Julian still had a ton of life, though. I want to point that out. 20 life 
Warm Conjun was attacking for quite some time. Thrak does gain some life. So he's got a lot of time. Jarr going to fire up Raging Ravine because that's one that Oblivion Stone can't destroy. Ghost Quarter can, though. So Ghost Quarter will take care of that land. And now Fabiano will search up a land out of his deck. Draw just trying to decide which basic he wants. He'll yeah. get a swamp. It's a reasonable play from Draw to just fire up the Raging Ravine in response to uh, the Ghost Quarters uh, activation. Mm -hmm. Just mostly because, um, you know, he has to apply pressure. He has to force Julian to do something, but he doesn't really want to overextend into the Oblivion Stone. The moment he plays a second permanent that can get blown up by it, Julian is almost assuredly going to take advantage of that and pop it off. We're going to head back over to John now. He's looking for another big payoff. Yeah, but he's down in Ugin, down a Warm Coil, down a Thrag Tusk. Uh, he still has a bunch of like Karns, maybe Walking Ballistas uh, to hit, as well as the extra copies of uh, the other ones I mentioned. Yeah, and his main deck, keep in mind this is a sideboard game, of course, as there's a Sylvan Scrying, but in the main deck here for Julian John, three Warm Coil Engines, two Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, three Walking Ballistas, as now Tron is online. I think, I he's think cast he has a walking ballista. I think he's casting a big spell. It's a walking ballista. Pretty sure that's X equals six. Okay. And that's enough to get the job done. Julian John going to win this game. Match here over Gerard Fabiano. Mono Green Tron going to take care of John. And for Julian John, he's going to scooch on up to eight and one. Fabiano will slide down to seven and two. And that's going to do us here for round number nine. But before we go...